All right, guys, welcome to Chef Danny's house. Uh, this is our first installment of cooking at Danny, Chef Danny's house. Uh, so today we're gonna make gnocchi. Um, some people call it gnocchi, and some people call it gnocchi, but it's not pronounced gnocchi. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys everything. I have everything to make that. You, this is something that's pretty simple. Um, you guys should be able to make this as well at home. Um, Alyssa, I know you have plenty of flour, so you should be fine with this. Um, so. Let's make gnocchi. What is gnocchi? So gnocchi is a pasta. It is a potato pasta. Um, so we're gonna make, we're, we need some potatoes and we need the basic ingredients for pasta and we, we will um, go from there. So, one little secret that I like to do is actually, I like to use a microwave for my potatoes because it's way faster. Yeah, you can roast them in the oven um, and peel them, but, but it's you know a third of the time if you pop them in the microwave and do it that way. So I've got mine in the microwave now. All I do is, all I do is put them in a bag, a little plastic bag, and put them in there for about three or four minutes um, until they're nice and soft. So the, the steam in there actually steams them, and it makes them, makes them really easy to peel. You want to let them cool a little bit, so I've let them cool for about five minutes now. Um, and then they're going to be super easy to peel. So they're nice and soft, you can see, I'm pushing on them. All, all you have to do to peel them is literally just peel them with your hands like this. So I'm doing two potatoes, I'm not doing a full batch of like the recipe that I gave you guys. Um, because I'm not going to eat that much. But you guys can take that recipe and divide it down uh, to fit your family as well if you want to try to make this at home. So peel off all the outside. If you see any black spots, go ahead and cut them out or peel them out uh, like that. And a little bit's not going to hurt you. Uh, get rid of your peels. So I'm going to start with two medium-sized potatoes and go from there. So I know your recipe says that you should use a cup of potatoes, but it's really hard whenever you're taking potatoes out of a bag and putting them you know, in an oven or in a microwave to know exactly how much two cups they are. So I would say a medium sized potato is, is about maybe three quarters of a cup, we'll see. So I've got everything kind of pre-measured here. Um, the flour is measured out, I have some salt here, um, I have a couple eggs and, and like I said since this isn't exact science, since, but I did give you guys a recipe to follow exactly, uh, we're going to uh, kind of wing it here. So we're going to take our potatoes and pop them in the bowl here. We're actually going to take a potato masher. We're going to mash them up real quick. So if you guys can see, I'm just going to mash them until they're nice and smooth. And you know, you could use, if we had, you know, a robocoop here, we could use that. Um, but this will work just fine. And you want them to be nice and soft, so you want to mash them around really well uh, and make sure that they're not going to be grainy inside your uh, gnocchi. So mash them until they're nice and smooth and it, whenever you're mashing it, it actually helps bring that starch out uh, which helps hold it together a little bit better too. So mash it for a few minutes so it's nice and smooth. So if a kid gets up in the middle of this, we'll have to pause it. They're, they're in the process of going to bed right now so this is my best time for me to do it whenever they're going to sleep. So you can see our potatoes nice and smooth. Um, they're, they're, not, they're not grainy, they're not chunky. Um, so make sure your potatoes are cooked all the way through. If they're not, they're going to be uh, chunky. Uh, you want to cook them, almost, almost slightly overcook them. Okay, so what I like to do at this point is I like to put my eggs in. Just crack a couple eggs and you're going to have to get your hands dirty. But you guys should be washing your hands enough that they're clean already. And then I like to mix mix those with my with my potatoes. And you guys know with pasta, it's it's a lot easier to use your hands than it is to you know get a bunch of different utensils dirty. So get them kind of folded in a little bit. They don't have to be completely blended, um, just loosely blended. And then we're gonna start adding flour to this, okay? And again, we don't want to over mix this just like regular pasta. So we want to try to hit hit it on the head exactly how much pasta we're or I'm sorry exactly how much flour we're gonna use. So I'm gonna start out with maybe about a cup and a half, maybe a little bit more. And then I'm just going to fold that in. Okay? And again, like I said, the easiest way to do this is with your hand and by feeling it. We don't want to over mix it, so mix in just what you need. Once it starts to form into a ball, you can see it's still, still really sticky right now. On my fingers it's sticking to my hand, so it still needs a little bit more flour. So keep working that around, keep working that flour in it. And once it gets into a ball form, we'll be able to take it out and finish it on our cutting board. 
So you guys can see, I'm kind of starting to make a bowl now. I'm going to pick up any of this loose stuff that, that can go in, kind of put it in there. And you don't want too much flour, so I'm leaving that excess flour over here on the side. You can see there's a little bit of potato and flour in there. But I don't want to, I don't want to mix all this, this random little stuff inside there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. And I might fold it in here in a minute. So again, just like regular pasta, we're just going to kind of, kind of work it around on our cutting board. And one thing I forgot to do is you will want to flour this so it doesn't stick. Flour it a little bit. Get any pieces that fall off, go ahead and just get rid of them. Okay, just like we do whenever we make pasta. It's the same concept. Once you get to about here, you're going to want to wash your hands. And again, just take a little flour in your hands and rub them together over a trash can. Rub them together over a trash can to kind of clean them up a little bit. So you can get the majority of the stuff off so they're a little cleaner. And then rinse them in your sink so you don't clog your sink up. And then, now we'll come back to it. So again, what we're looking for, you guys have all made pasta, you know what we're looking for with pasta. We want it to be not sticky enough to stick to your hands, but we want it to hold together. You see how whenever I fold that in half, it kind of breaks like that? It needs a little bit more pasta. It's doing that because it doesn't have enough structure to it. And that, that, I'm sorry, more flour. That flour is what helps build structure. It's what helps build gluten inside there um, and what makes it hold together ultimately. So just kind of work it around, working more flour in as needed. And again, you, what you're looking for is, once it's not too sticky, you want it to be a little sticky, but not overly sticky. You don't want it to stick to your hands. So you guys can see, as I put my hand on there, it's sticking a little bit. See, I'm getting a little bit, so we need a little bit more flour in there. I'm going to work this a little. And again, if you like you're folding your uh, socks here. So I'm taking the bottoms and I'm pushing them in. Pushing the bottoms in, just like you're folding a pair of socks. Okay, we're going to add a little bit more flour to this. Put a little more on the cutting board, make sure it doesn't stick there. And again, keep working it around, folding those socks. Okay, and we're getting to the point now where it's looking pretty good. So it's not sticking to my hands, um, and it's holding its structure. You see it's not breaking. That's what we're looking for. We might just add just a hair more. So, now that we got this all worked, worked out, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to roll some out for you. Okay, so reflower the cutting board. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up all this stuff I don't need. Get it off there, so I've got a clean cutting board. Okay, go ahead. What we'll do is we'll just pull, I don't know, maybe about four ounces off, and we're gonna roll it out into a into like a tube, to a cylinder. So the way I like to do it is I like to take my hands and go back and forth like this, and let it fall through my hands as it's as it's doing it, and it kind of stretches itself out. Anywhere that's fatter, you see where it's fatter here than it is like here. All you have to do is start at that point and work it to the next point, and you can see it's starting to thin out. So take that. Remember, flour is your friend in this. So hardly ever can you have too much flour. We're gonna work it down until it's about about maybe. A little under half an inch wide, so we're looking about there. And you can do it on your cutting board too. While you're pulling out, you can pull out any of the sections that, that you want to make thinner. Just go ahead and pull. So you're, you start here, you rock back and forth, and you pull outwards, and it'll thin those areas out. So any 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 area that's a little too thin, you can push it back together and then roll it back out. Okay, so I want them. All relatively the same. So get it to about right there. Okay. And then what I like to do is I uh, normally I'd use a bench scraper, but I don't have one, so I'm just gonna use a knife. I'll go ahead and cut this end off. It's a little bigger than I want to work with. Um, and I'll cut this end off over here as well. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a fork. I'm gonna, going to put some, uh, well, let me do it this way so you can see what I'm doing. Was well, this way better? And what I'm going to do is put some little lines inside there. I'm going to do it all the way down. 
And you'll see it kind of helps uh, make that gnocchi look a little more even. These are things we can put in time lapse. Yeah. And then from there, I'm going to cut the gnocchi. So I, you, it really, it's really up to you on the size of the gnocchi you want to cut. Um, I like mine bite size, um, and that's what I would suggest you cutting them is in, into bite size. Again, we don't want people to have to work for their food. Like we don't need them to cut their own gnocchi. We can do it for them right now. And it, it, it takes more flavor. The smaller it is, the more flavor it can hold as well. So I'll do it about like that. So maybe about half an inch, okay? And try to make them as consistent as you can. So I'm just going down, cutting about half an inch off of each one. And they don't have to be perfect. Actually, I prefer them not perfect because then people know that you made it yourself. If you want to store these gnocchi, you can either store them in some uh, semolina flour uh, or some, some uh, Cornmeal, uh, you can store them in flour as well, but they hold a lot better in cornmeal. Uh, for this, for since I'm holding these for just a short amount of time, I'm just going to do them in some some flour, and then stack them up right here. The flour will keep them from sticking together. Remember, flour is your best friend. Welcome back. Haha, -ha, that's what's great about video is I can take a break, you come back to it, now all my stuff's clean, I can get restarted. So I got a, I got a pot of boiling water here. Um, you probably noticed I didn't have that earlier. Um, so we're moving on to our next step. Um, while you guys are watching this, probably sitting in your PJs, sitting on your couch, I'm here sweating over the stove. Um, but uh, one thing I forgot to mention before is whenever you make your dough, you want that dough to be nice and soft. If you keep mixing it, it's going to get really hard um, and, and it's going to be hard to eat. You want this to be a nice, soft, delicate dough. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our, take our water and we're going to salt it until it tastes like, I hope you guys said it, the sea. So we'll go ahead and put some salt in there, uh, bring, that, bring that back up to a boil. Um, I got all my, all my gnocchi here. so. Uh, during that break, I made a little bit more gnocchi, um, and then don't worry about the flour that's in there. Uh, it's going to come off whenever we put it in the in the water. However, one thing to mention is if you put a bunch of flour in the water, it will try to boil over. Um, so what I like to do is is uh, you'll have to turn it down a little bit, or you can put a spoon over the top to kind of break that that tension of the water. Um, so all I'm going to do now is take my gnocchi, kind of separate it out a little bit, and I'm going to put it in there. And you want to make sure you have enough water that it's not going to overcrowd inside there. Gently put them in there. Shake off the excess flour here. Put them in there. It's okay if you make a little mess. And then we're going to go ahead, give it one stir. Okay, Be gentle with them because they're very delicate right now. They can break apart if you were to stir them rapidly. Then we're going to cover them back up. Okay, These are only going to take a few minutes to cook. Uh, because it is fresh pasta, and you guys all know that we've cooked fresh pasta before. They're probably going to take four or five minutes to cook. Um, so, while that's cooking, I'll show you some of the other ingredients I have ready for it. Um, so I have a little bit of oil here, um, obviously salt. Um, I have some, some uh, mozzarella there that I shredded, um, and some room temperature butter. Um, we have some basil here, some fresh basil uh, that I picked. They're from our garden that, that we grew at school. I, I brought the plants home and re, replanted them and they're continuing living at my house. So uh, we got those going. Um, and we have some lemon and I'll show you how all of that's going to go into, you can see it now. Um, that, that flower in the water will actually, that flower will catch air and it will make it, make it um, come to the top like that. So I'm going to go ahead and uncover them. And let them continue to cook. I turned it down just a little bit so it doesn't do that again. Mmm, smells delicious. Burnt water. <laughs> um, go ahead and give them, give them another stir. Make sure, make sure that they're not sticking together. Um, there's no need to put oil or anything inside this water because it's not going to help. It doesn't do anything. 
Uh, you just want to use the, the, the water that's in there and your pasta. So, they're starting to float now, which means that they're getting pretty close to being done. Um, and that's what you're looking for. You want them to float. You don't want to overcook them. You can even take one and take it out and just cut it in half and see what the inside looks like. Okay? So they've been cooking for about two minutes now. You can see the inside still looks a little doughy. Um, if you were to taste it, it would probably taste a little bit like raw flour. And it's a little sticky. It sticks to your teeth. So you want those to cook for about four to five minutes to make sure that they're nice and nice and done. And like I said, this kind of a rolling boil right here is perfect for uh, for pasta. You don't need it. You don't need a rapid boil to cook pasta. Just a simmering boil like that will be fine. So, um, Noki still has about another minute on it while it's while it's working. I'll tell you. Um, a little bit about gnocchi. So again, it's a potato dumpling. You can make it with flour. You can make it with semolina, um, which is which is a uh, corn flour. Um, but but most of the time we make it with flour. Uh, so it's a potato dumpling essentially. Um, and you can use the dough also to make pierogies as well. So you could use that dough, l roll it out, stuff it with cheese, um, make little half moons, and make pierogies out of it as well. Um, so our our pasta is looking pretty good here. You see how they plumped up. They've got nice and plump now. That's what you're looking for. You want them to float to the top and be nice and plump. So they grow as they cook as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and strain the water off this. And I'm gonna wanna, I'm gonna wanna cook these right away. Uh, because if I don't, again, you guys know that they'll stick together and then we'll have some problems. So I like to use a non-stick pan to do this next part. And some oil. We're going to go ahead and put a little oil in the bottom. Um, this will help them not stick and it will give it a nice caramelization that we're looking for. I have it on high right now just to heat it up, but once it heats up, then I'll move on and uh, we'll, we're actually going to sear these gnocchi. Okay, so while this is heating up, <clears throat> um, again what we're going to look for is kind of that wisp of smoke uh, is, is what we're looking for essentially. While this is heating up, you could use other types of, of fat in this as well. You could use bacon grease. Uh, you, you could use butter, but it's going to get a little bit burnt. Um, so I, I suggest and prefer starting out with just regular vegetable oil or canola oil or something with a high smoke point uh, so that it, it doesn't burn uh, before you get to the end of where, you, where, you're, where you're trying to go. So go ahead and coat that. We're looking for that water, or I'm sorry, we're looking for that oil to be kind of the visco viscosity of water. So um, we're going to let that heat up for just another minute and it's going to start... It's going to start having a little wisp of smoke is what we're looking for. So I'm not going to go too much because I'm in my house and I don't want to smoke out, smoke out my whole house. Um, so I'll, I'll do it a little bit less and I suggest if you're doing it at home too, make sure it's a little less than smoking. Um, so our oil, if you want to come over here and see this. Our oil, you can see it moves like water. So that's kind of the viscosity we're looking for and making sure that our pan's hot enough to put our gnocchi in. So, we'll grab our gnocchi. Make sure it's nice and dry. If it's not, then you're gonna, you know, you might, you have the chance of uh, starting a fire or it popping everywhere. So now you can see that little wisp of smoke coming off. We're gonna go ahead and put our gnocchi, and then we're gonna turn our temperature down to a, about medium heat. So spread them out so that they're they're not stacked up in there, and and you are covering as much of the area as you can. Again, you may have to kind of move that oil around to kind of make sure everything gets coated. And we're going to sear them on both sides. Um, so I'm going about, I guess, a, a little over medium heat, about between medium and high here. And you just want to really make sure that they all get coated with oil here. And if you need to add a little more oil, that's all right too. Uh, we can take some oil out at the end. Okay. So the reason we sear it is because if you were to eat it just like it was coming straight from the pot, it's a little chewy. It only has one texture. Um, and I want you guys to see, you know, this is a liaison cooking, so that it, it requires multiple steps. Um, the searing actually gives it, you know, another texture, another dimension to it. Um, so you can, you can actually get a crunch on the outside of it as well. So it's not just that kind of chewy, mushy, um, potato-y filling uh, that, 
that you'd think. Um, it only takes a couple minutes on each side. You can see them. They're starting to, starting to brown now. So I'll go ahead and flip them over. And you, you kind of want to do this individually uh, just to make sure you get them toasted on both sides. This isn't necessarily the easiest thing. You'll see the ones that aren't toasted, it's pretty, pretty easy. If you don't get them all, 100% both sides, that's all right. At least they have some of that texture on them. I got most of them flipped over here. As you can see, give them another couple minutes on this side just to uh, caramelize on this side. And then we'll take some of that fat out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a brown butter on this real quick. Um, there's lots of things you could do. You could do, I mean, you could put marinara sauce over this, or you could put uh, Alfredo sauce over this and, and call it good. I mean, it is a pasta, but I really like it with brown butter sauce. I think it, it makes the flavor, the potato flavor stand out, it makes the whole dish stand out a little bit more. Um, so like I said, we're at the end here. We've got them all toasted on both sides. We'll give them, a, we'll give them another minute or so. Um, I like mine really crunchy on the outside. I really like that, that crunch texture that it, that it brings to it uh, whenever you get a nice crunch on it. And that, that sear provides a, a, another flavor. It provides that caramelization flavor that we're looking for as well. Um, so it would be kind of bland, like I said, if you just blanched it and then, and then uh, tossed some sauce in it. I mean, it would be fine, but it just wouldn't have that you know, extra component that we're looking for. Um, and so you second years that are working on... Uh, I'm sorry, you first years that are working on, on different cooking methods, this would be a great one because we're blanching whenever we, whenever we put it in the water and we're searing whenever we do it in there. So it's actually two forms of cooking. We're doing a wet heat, a wet heat first and a dry heat second. So now we've got them all, got them all toasted up. They're not over caramelized. We don't want to see any, any really dark spots. We can go ahead and just kind of, if there's any extra oil, which this doesn't have a lot, we can just pour some of that out. Any of that extra oil, because we don't want to be eating oil. Any that fell out, go ahead and put back in. And then we're just going to put some butter in there and make a, make a simple brown butter. So you could make this in a separate dish, or you can make it in the same dish. Because we can add a little bit more color to this, um, just how it is. The way I like to do it is kind of move my gnocchi to one side, and move my brown butter the, to the other side, move my butter to this side. And then what I can do from there is actually brown my butter without overcooking my pasta. So you can see that butter is already starting to brown right here. And it, it goes really quick in a pan like this. So you have a really hot pan, it's gonna go real quick. Once it's done, you can go ahead and bring your gnocchi in, kind of steal that brown butter over here, and kind of whisk it away in your gnocchi. Okay, so you see I'm, I'm taking away that outside so it doesn't burn. And you can see right here, you see how it's nice and brown right there? Oh, nice. Can you see that color? Mm -hmm. So a nice brown color, that's what we're looking for. Once we get there, return, take it off the heat, move it over, over to a place where you haven't had heat, and then we're just gonna toss it in that brown butter, okay? I know this is super healthy, but that's what we're looking for as chefs. We want it as unhealthy as possible, that's what makes it taste so good. Toss it in a little brown butter. From there, I'm gonna, since I started with salt when, in my water, I'm gonna go ahead and finish with a little salt as well. Okay, that doesn't take a lot. That, that water was, was nice and salty. I'm gonna go ahead, toss it, toss it in there. And then we're actually gonna finish with a little bit of lemon, lemon uh, fresh lemon juice. So squeeze that right over the top. It'll actually cool down that brown butter and stop it from cooking. And what it does is it helps cut through that richness of all that butter we put on there and, and add another you know, layer another dimension to our food as well. That's an acidic layer, layer to our food as well. Um, so what I do from here, it's, it's very simple. So we're going to go ahead and plate up our gnocchi. Um, move this over here. 
gonna go ahead and put my pan to one side to kind of let that extra fat kind of drip off. And then we're gonna we're gonna just go ahead and plate it up just like this. So I like to plate it in just maybe a simple pile. And you want to do it kind of fast because you want this stuff to be really hot. It tastes the best when it's nice and hot. Uh, and we're going to put some cheese over the top, so we want to make sure that that melts, melts nice and well over the top of it as well. So, kind of pile our gnocchi up. We can come back and fix it. We'll go ahead and just restack it, kind of like this. Remember, we want to add height to our plates. That adds value. Okay. So something like that. Wipe off any excess butter that, that got on the got around it. We're gonna top it with a little fresh mozzarella. Okay. And that heat, that residual heat from the gnocchi should help melt that mozzarella over the top of it. Okay. And then we're gonna take some basil, some fresh basil. We're gonna take some fresh basil and we're going to chiffonade it uh, for a garnish and for a little bit of flavor. And so what I like to do with basil is I like to take the biggest leaves first, put them on the bottom, and then stack up smaller leaves on top of them like this. And then you can take it and you can roll it up, roll it up real tight, then take a really nice sharp knife and you wanna have a nice slicing approach to this, okay? You want to make sure that you have a nice slicing approach because if you just push down, you're going to bruise the basil and it's not going to cut it properly. So a nice slicing approach to it. So you can see how much I'm using that whole leading knife edge whenever I do it. And you can go super thin. Go as thin as you can on that. Then what we'll do is we'll take our fresh basil. We'll go right over the top of that. Okay, so that adds a nice garnish. It adds a nice color. It also adds a dimension to it, a flavor. Um, a freshness that you're that you're gonna get from that basil as well. Um, so we have made a brown butter brown butter gnocchi with fresh mozzarella and fresh basil. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, it was kind of fun. I'm sweating a little bit. I don't know if you can tell my face is red, uh, but this was fun. Thank you guys for joining me in my house. I know this is a little different, um, but enjoy. All right, guys. So again. Like I always say, guys, I give you guys a canvas as culinary arts. Um, so this is a canvas. This is a very generic um, thing. You can put a lot of different herbs and spices inside that gnocchi. You can change it and make it your own. Um, there's a lot you can do with it. Again, this is your canvas. You, you, you have the paintbrush, so, so paint away. Um, you can put nuts inside there, different cheeses, all, all sorts of things. Um, the other thing, just stay safe. Uh, be happy. Be healthy. And I'll see you guys. Wash your hands. And I'll see you guys later.